We have to move on. I know that Natalia has, uh, before we have time for a few minutes of questions, mm -hmm. you want to have a, a short comment on that, okay. right? I will speak Russian if it's yes. possible. Andreas, interpreter. Uh, mm -hmm. Я согласна, что можно проводить в Беларуси расследование, но при одном условии. I agree that it's possible to carry out investigative journalism in uh, Belarus, but under one condition. Если это никоим образом не вредит белорусским властям. If this does not in any way harm the Belarusian authorities. Потому что можно проводить расследование на такие Казалось бы, с одной стороны, значительно, с другой стороны, никак не мешающие белорусским властям темы. The themes have to be on one hand um, investigative, but on the other hand um, not harmful to, to any... On, on one hand significant, but on the other hand not really uh, important to, to state. Но ни один журналист внутри Беларуси сегодня не будет проводить расследование на тему, кто похитил и убил лидеров оппозиции в Беларуси. Uh, forbidden themes uh, which are, cannot be mentioned include who um, stood behind the murder of the opposition leaders in uh, Belarus. Кто организовал взрыв в Минском метро для того, чтобы отвлечь внимание от людей от экономического кризиса, из-за чего погибли люди? Who organized the bombings, uh, explosions in the Belarusian metro, um, designed to avert uh, attention from the economical failures of the country and the killing people? Как пытают политических заключенных сегодня в белорусских тюрьмах? How prisoners of conscience are being tortured in Belarusian prisons? Или как сегодня Лукашенко продает оружие в Иран и в Сирию? And how Lukashenko is today selling arms to Iran and Syria? Okay. Uh, questions, please. Anyone? <clears throat> Hello, Jonas Fröberg, Svenska Dagbladet. Uh, I've cooperated with the Chinese investigative magazine and they, they said exactly the same thing as you say. You can write investigative stuff if, if it's the right things that don't uh, harm the, 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 the government. But, but how do you, from case to case, I mean sometimes it must be a very delicate problem to see, okay, now we have this stuff, can we write about it? And, and, uh, how do you manage to do that? Mm -hmm. I can... Okay, Yao Yan, please. You know, telling truth, maybe sometimes, sometimes, I hear sometimes from journalists, this is impossible, this is impossible, this is impossible. In my investigations, some gov high government people were involved, yet they were bad guys in these investigations, and we got troubles. So I believe that if to make investigations is possible to achieve results, and for example, from my point of view, if I will have possibilities to investigate even the cases that Natalia told, if I will know how to do it, if I will know what method to use, I will do this investigation. The problem is that in Belarus, many people Many journalists don't understand the genre, investigative journalism, and sometimes call every article, this is investigative journalism. You understand the problem. So I think if Belarusian journalists will be better skilled, they will do real investigation journalism, and they will, tr they will uh, take any topic, from my point of view. They, I believe in it, and in, I believe that investigative journalism, this is a method how to change our country. Next question. Please. Yeah, I have a question regarding the drug reports that you made. Uh, was it, did it somehow lead to any government officials uh, like uh, being in charge of this uh, drug, uh, drug sales? Or it was not like they were not involved because I would doubt. And also, like, is it uh, do does the regime use some sort of this um, uh, the, the the issue that uh, drugs are criminalized in a way to uh, arrest people for political reasons by uh, giving them this um, um, by arresting them for drugs, for example, or something like that? Is that has that happened? In Belarus, we have dictatorship. So in 19th, like I don't remember how many criminal authorities were 
killed or were put out from the country. So in every business, drugs or, so, or other business, anyway, government is involved in our country. So I don't believe that Lukashenko didn't know about this problem when so many people took this drug. I don't believe in it. So, but how could I do this investigation? Yes. Also, there are people, government people, who are against. Like an opposition in government, yes? <laughs> an opposition. So some special forces, they have fights among the, themselves. And a journalist can use these fights to do investigations. So it works in this way. Uh, One more question okay. here, please. Excuse me, can I uh, yeah? comment? Natalia first, and then... Mm -hmm. uh, есть одна опасность. Проведение журналистских расследований в Беларуси. Вот. There is one danger, dangerous point here. Власти позволяют проводить вот такие маленькие расследования и наказывают после этих расследований так называемых стрелочников. The, power, the powers that be allow smaller investigative work to be carried out, but and then they um, uh, put the blame on 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 so-called just kind of official victims. То есть они могут наказать какого-то наркодилера, но они не накажут чиновника, который контролирует наркобизнес в Беларуси. So they would allow the blame to be put on, on the drug dealer, but not on the uh, public servant who controls the drug business. И для людей, и для Запада вообще создается впечатление, что в стране есть справедливость. And there, can, there could be created a false perception in, for people and in the West that the country is in fact fighting crime. То есть это тоже, вот в этом тоже есть, кроется определенная опасность. Проведение вот таких полурасследований, когда мы половину провели, а половину мы боимся. So there is a danger that we uh, create the sort of fake investigative journalism where to one part we um, investigate and, carry and clean something up, but on the other hand we're too afraid to go all the way. Yeah, okay, thank you. We have one last question. Uh, Boris Nilsson, freelance. Um, uh, two questions, perhaps you uh, answered one of them. Uh, what was the reason for uh, the authorities to react on your investigation and uh, to get this new law? Was that that you used uh, different parts of the uh, authorities fighting against each other? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, do you think that you made um, this kind of um, dangerous investigation or that Natalia, Natalia told, talked about? Every time I, I, for example, I have a very simple reaction for my investigation. The police or KGB, they uh, came to my apartment, took my computer, took everything, every uh, digital tools from my apartment, and then the criminal case is opened, and then I am accused, so I cannot work normally. They put me to uh, questions every day or every week. Uh, you know, they intimidate me, they threaten, and they try to stop me. That's normal reaction of the authorities. They will never react normally because they hate the investigative journalism like uh, independent journalism at all. <clears throat> we have to, to last 30 seconds, Jeremy. We have a next seminar coming. I understood. I want to tell that, of course, some colleagues may be blamed uh, me that, uh, okay, Main guys are not punished, yes? You know their surnames, they are not punished. But the main idea here is to stop problem. Not to get this blood, I need blood, I need to punish this guy. But to stop this problem, to stop this selling, yes? To stop this drug invasion. And we achieved this main thing. Yes, we couldn't put these guys, the Ministry of Trade, uh, today's Ministry of Trade, to a prison. We couldn't do it. And I believe that Belarus, we have serious, huge problems, of course, dictator, real dictatorship, no elections. But it's not North Korea, and there are people, like, more or less honest, who react. We have to stop there. 
Thank you very much, all three of you, for coming here and sharing your experiences. Thank you. Warm applause.